This broadcast is brought to you in part by Hedrick's Chevrolet, celebrating 75 years in the Valley, and State Center Community College District, covering Fresno, Reedley, Oakhurst, Madera, and Clovis. Thank you for your support. Stadium in Central Fresno. This is North Yosemite League football on CMEC. Tonight's matchup: the hosts, the McLean Highlanders, and the visiting Hoover High School Patriots. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dan Taylor, joined by the coach Fred Clark. And tonight, Fred, final game of the regular season. Interesting matchup: McLean going to be a 500 team, and Hoover High. Well, they've had a struggle. Their struggles this season. Yeah, Hoover's one and eight. They only beat the uh, winless Sanger West Hornets. McLean's four and five, looking to go into the playoffs with a win tonight. Should be an interesting game if last year can be any indication. Well, the ball's on a tee down on the artificial turf. We're ready to kick this one off. Thanks for joining us for North Yosemite League football here on CMAC. Hoover High won the toss. They elected to kick off. Ball going out of bounds at the McLean 35-yard line. And after they add a few yards for the penalty, the Highlanders will go first on offense tonight. Well, Dan McLean, they've lost. Uh, they got beat last week by the league champion Sunnyside, but they showed some fire. They played hard the whole way. And Hoover's just trying to, you know, finish this up on a positive note. They were 0-10 last season, that 1-8 right now, and, and the program is struggling. And last year when they played the Highlanders on this field on the last game, they had many chances to close the game out. They let it slip away, and I I'm sure they would like to uh, close, close the door tonight if they get that opportunity. Both schools have just about filled their respective sides of the stadium. Quite a lot of enthusiasm tonight. It's senior night for the Highlanders, and they had big festivities prior to kickoff, honoring seniors not just on the football team, but on the band and cheer squads, their parents and all on the field to celebrate the night. First play, they keep it on the ground. They pick up, well, about 11 yards. It looked like they've crossed the first down marker, and they've moved the football into Hoover High territory. That was Singsalon with a ball and squared up, got off tackle. Good run, good way to start the game inside of Patriot territory at the 49. Well, McLean has been very effective running the football this season. It's that balance that you want to keep the defense honest, and that's been a little bit of a difficulty for them. Yes. So first down from the Hoover 49-yard line. Noah Zamora, the quarterback for the Highlanders. Patriots showing blitz. And they go right off right tackle and pick up a good six yards on the first play. And so far, the Highlanders' offensive line has uh, really gotten a good jump. The Patriots seem a little bit unsteady, not quite sure what to do yet. So they say the gain was five yards, and it brings up second and five from the Patriots' 44-yard line. Zamora fakes the handoff, going to keep it himself. That may be a yard at best, depending upon a, the spot, could be two. Patriots did a good job defensing that. That didn't fool anyone. I, uh, I just wondered the way the play developed, if it was a broken play or not. It looked like Zamora was a little confused when he came out of that. So for the first time tonight, a team facing a third down situation. Third and four with the ball at the 43. They need to get to the Hoover 39 to gain another four plays. Receiver in motion, Newhouse gives it to the back. He's got the first down and then some. Singsalon again, he gets low to the ground and uh, right before a contact, you can see how he really tightens up uh, anticipating running over somebody. Uh, I didn't point out the temperature at game time was 65 degrees and I approximate the wind at being about four knots out of the northwest. Very impressed, very impressed with your weather skills. So another first down for the Highlanders. Football at the 36-yard line. 
running very, very effectively against the Patriots. Newhouse in motion. They give it once again to the lone back. All the way down to the 25-yard line and another first down. Experts in history would uh, suggest that the Highlanders are continuing to go with this until the Patriots find a way to stop it. Absolutely. Sling Sulin running very effectively, and they seem to have determined that attacking that right side of the Hoover defensive front is the way to go. You'll have to bear with us tonight. Hoover's wearing these camouflage uniforms. It makes it very difficult for us to identify the numbers. Newhouse on the reverse. The man in motion keeping the football. And he is across the 20 and down to about the 18-yard line. So brings up second and two. Uh, Dan, when you can uh, get six, seven, eight yards on your initial run, it can really open up the possibilities on offense. Well, McLean running the football very, very effectively, and they're just, as you said, Fred, going to keep this ball on the ground until the Patriots stop them. That's what I would be doing. Sing Sulin has another first down. As they're in the red zone, down to about the 13-yard line. Got a momentary little stop the clock to move the chains. Zamora hustling back to the huddle after getting a play from the sideline. Highlanders hustling up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, McLean. They're on the Hoover 12 yard line. Not a single pass has gone in the air just yet. They've kept the ball on the ground. And just like this, into the end zone, McLean touchdown. They're on the board first. And they just went right to the Patriots on that. They're just blowing them off the line. And Sulin with a 12 yard run for the first touchdown of the game. And McLean scores first. It's very demoralizing to a team when they just uh, they get the ball and they go about 60 yards on you with uh, the right side was wide open. Hardly any resistance at all. So the Highlanders coming up to the line of scrimmage going for two. Zamora barking the signals. Going to the Sing Sulin. Patriots have him wrapped up and they're able to stop him and they are unsuccessful in the two point try. So best stop of the night so far for the Patriots, which begs the question, I uh, wonder if McLean has had a problem with their kicking team over the week, if they had a uh, injury, because their kicking game has been uh, rather decent this season. Well, we'll see as the night moves along. Yeah, they may not need it. Taking a page out of the sunny side playbook. Sunnyside rarely uh, goes for the uh, single PAT and generally uh, this goes back years since Gordon Wood has had his uh, step on Sunnyside. Always go for the two point conversion on your first touchdown. Well and the other thing that Sunnyside does very very well is they don't punt very often. When it's fourth down they're often going for it and they've converted 22 times this season. Not bad at all. So the Highlanders to kick off with a 6-0 lead, 7-11 to go here in the first quarter of play. Glad you've joined us on CMAC for North Yosemite League football here at McLean Stadium. The turnout tonight, terrific for this game. And McLean side's almost full over there. And this, this is our first cool night that we've had all season. Really feels like a football night. Oh, this is perfect football weather. So the Highlanders keep it on the ground. Patriots managed to grab the football at the 30 yard line, but the Highlanders were all over it, swatting the football and hoping that they might be able to recover that kick. Yeah, the, the young man that swatted it may have been better off if he would have uh, tried to grab it instead of uh, push it back, but 
Generally, the team going forward has all of the momentum. Fun play, I love those. It was, absolutely. So the Patriots go on offense for the first time tonight. They've got the ball at their own 31-yard line. Darian Garcia, their quarterback, and they're going to keep it on the ground. Looks like they'll grab maybe four yards. Well, that second after, after they... Uh, they went to the sound of the whistle. He got a little bit more than that. Looked like he got about six on that. Looks like McLean stopped tackling after initial contact was made. Harry Romero, the ball carrier for the Patriots. They're going to give him seven yards. It'll bring up the second down and three. Going to keep it on the ground again. And the Highlanders... Met him with a wall that, uh, depending upon the spot, uh, they're going to give him a the yard. It's going to be third and a long, Highlander. long yard, right Game just in the 40 two. yard line. Highlander hype zone makes a noise. It's third down. Got to keep it on the ground one more time, and it looks as though the Patriots have the first down as Romero manages to push it to about the 43-yard line. That Patriot offensive line got low, made good surge on that first down yardage. So the Patriots trying to answer after McLean marched upfield and scored on their first possession of the night. They're going to go to the air. Out pass. Receiver slips. And the official is going to whistle that ball down. Did his knee touch when he made the grab? His yes, knee it did. touched. Pass is complete to the high key. No that play ended with a lot less uh, flash than it looked like when uh, the pass was made. Thought that had some potential. Out passes are dangerous passes. Patriots with three receivers at the bottom of your screen. But they're going to keep it on the ground and they may get a yard at most. Seems like the Highlanders so far have had pretty good reads the last well, few plays on what Hoover's doing. Big play for the Patriots coming up. Third and 13 from their own 41-yard line. They have to get all the way down to the McLean 46 in order to get a first down. Pressure forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. We've got a penalty flag in the backfield. Tipped away by the defensive back, incomplete. But let's see what the penalty call will be. The guess would be a hold. Usually is in those situations. Climb it! He's declining it! That is holding on Hoover, and uh, this gives us the opportunity to identify Angelo Pointer, the referee that just made the call. The umpire is Clayton Williams. Headlinesman is Carl Workentine. The line judge is Brett Luna. The back judge is Richard Viscarondo. Patriots are going to take a timeout. Big third down, or fourth down, fourth and 13 coming up. And they want to talk this one over, which would indicate. Looked like they only had 10 men on the field. Ah, there we go. And you seldom want to burn a timeout right before punting the ball. There's a lot of times you don't want to burn a timeout. That's in the top five. So indeed, the Patriots use the first of their three timeouts here in the first half. And especially 10 weeks into the season, players need to know their assignments. Exactly. Okay, we've got 11 men out there now. So the officials trying to get the Highlanders back out on the, the field. They wrap up their huddle. And the Patriots will be booting this football away. Their quarterback 
Darian Garcia also doubling as the putter. And that's always a dangerous thing for a defense. Yes, it is. McLean should be uh, well coached in that. Punt's going to come down at the 40-yard line. It'll take a Hoover bounce, and it'll be down at the McLean 35. So Patriots have to boot it away without getting any points on their first drive of the night. And here come the Highlanders to see if they can add to their 6-0 lead. Well, Dan, because I'm a, an up person and a perennial optimist, uh, Hoover's possession, it was most important that they did not go three and out. They got one first down. When you when the other team scores on you, then you go three and out on the next possession. It that that can really establish some uh, uh, slow momentum. And the Patriots got one first down, so they do have something to build on. We'll see if they can make some defensive stands now. Patriots now on defense. McLean with the football. First and ten from the 31 yard line. They're going to keep it on the ground. Big big break through right tackle. And Desir Newhouse. Handoff from Noah Samora to Desir Newhouse. And Newhouse looked Newhouse like tackle. he lost his balance. He may have got tripped up, but he was able just to keep his balance and go forward for nine yards. Looks like he may have uh, nine, been ten, down one. by about three or four. <laughs> that was some nice balance on that. So a nine-yard pickup brings up second down and one for the Highlanders. As they have been tremendously effective on the ground nine, thus four. far tonight. Patriots showing blitz. Zamora going to the air. Caught at the 22-yard line. Penalty flag flies. It sure was looking like pass interference there. Yes, it did. So this, this could go either way there, too, but I, I think that's going to be on the Patriots. Jordan Stewart hauling that one in, but it appeared he did so while his jersey was being tugged by the defender. Here comes the call. Pass interference on number six. Pass interference, pass interference on number six on, on the uh, defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, Dan, you got that one right. And some of the time with uh, pass interference, your jersey's getting grabbed and you push off and you get called for the uh, push off instead of the initial interference. Thought that may have been what they were going to call there. So the ball spotted at the Hoover 32-yard line. A big first down for the Highlanders. Hoover showing blitz once again, and this time it works. They're able to stop the play for a loss of about four yards. Newhouse is put in tackle by Gary. Bernick Bryant, first of the Patriot tacklers. Lost a yard and down the play, second and 13. That was, that was the Patriots' best penetration there. Yeah, McLean's band over there uh, having a light show for us. Yeah, fun. Very, very fun. Very good. Up under center. A little bit of play action. Rolling to his right. Zamora has a receiver in and out of the hands of Ty McMillan. Hit McMillan right on the numbers. And he hauls that one in, and he's got plenty of room to run as well. Yeah, he was... Uh, if he wasn't going to get a touchdown, he was going to get real close to it. So third down now. Third and 13, football resting on the 35-yard line. There you see one more look and kind of play that young man who's got to learn to shake off because they could come right back to him and they'll need his concentration. Patriots creeping up. Showing blitz. And very effectively, they toss over it. And that's Newhouse. Gets the ball inside the 30-yard line, but he'll be short of the first down marker. And it looked like he was going to have a little bit more room when he's able to bring that ball down. Brings up a fourth down for the Highlanders inside the 30. Fourth and seven, and they're going for it. These games are just total chess matches. You know, when a, a team starts showing bliss and has a little bit of success, well, quick screen passes and draws can uh, counteract that real quick. 
Zamora up under center. Last time he did this, they went into play action. And he does it again, but goes to the opposite side. Loses the handle on the football. And he's brought down. Patriots actually recover the fumble. That was a disaster for the Highlanders. They lose 12 yards and give the ball uh, up, and the Patriots are fired up. So the Patriots will take over the football at their own 40-yard line. The one Patriot I could identify as number that came up with that fumble, and his number is not on our roster. So, <laughs> 77, whoever you are, I appreciate, appreciate your enthusiasm. That was nice. Patriots with the football now. Darian Garcia working out of the pistol formation. Takes the snap. They're going to keep it on the ground and not gain anything at all. A minute 32 to go here in the first quarter of play from McLean Stadium. The host Highlanders on top 6-0. Patriots hoping to put a drive together that can erase that lead. Dan Taylor with the coach, Fred Clark. Glad you're with us here tonight on CMAC. No game, second and ten. Quick pass, dropped by the receiver. Dan, I've uh, talked a bit last week with McLean. They're four and five going into this game, just like they were last season at the same time. But this McLean team is much better than the team we saw last year. They're uh, three non-league games. They played Porterville, Mendota, and Mission Prep. Those are all good teams. And they were only out of uh, that game with Mission Prep over in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, it was a battle, the Mendota game. Yeah. Yeah, overtime game. That was a good football game. Deep ball. The receiver has managed to get by the defender. Incomplete pass, but a pair of penalty flags fly. And we likely got a pass interference call coming. And that was one of those. It was not a bad pass interference. He was going to get a... Uh, about a 35-yard gain on that. Instead, there'll be a 15-yard gain. That's an offense on well, the defense. So instead of number a four, that's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Big first down for the Patriots because they were facing fourth down. Okay, they a 15-yard penalty on pass interference. Oh, uh, I'm I don't understand this. Well, I'm going to get some clarification at halftime. The ball was launched about the 40-yard line, and in high school, it's not a spot penalty. Here's another look. Okay. Okay, now they're moving it back again. Now, a spot penalty would have put the ball at the 45-yard line. And they are placing the football at the 44-yard line. Well, no, it's at the 25. No oh, correction. Yeah, you're right, the 25-yard line. Now, Coach Pancotti wants to discuss it, and the officials don't want to seem to have any discussion on this. Now they're marching things back. Yeah, this, this isn't the NFL here. Here comes the explanation. And the line of scrimmage was at the 40-yard line on this. Correct, correct. Well, they <laughs> uh, at least they're close to getting it right here. 
What they're trying to do is to get the chain crew to set up where they were before the play began, and it was the 40-yard line. You're right. Now, if Angelo Pointer would uh, call on my cell phone right now, we could set him straight. <laughs> well, the McLean assistant coaches up here in the booth to our left are trying vehemently to do that. You can probably hear them. Yeah, well, I, I agree with them. <laughs> the ball should be at the 45. Well, on the scoreboard, it shows that the 40, the Hoover 40 was the previous line of scrimmage. So a 15-yard penalty would put it at the McLean 45-yard line. Well, the officials have put the football at the McLean 40-yard line where Hoover has it. First and 10. Overthrowing the receiver, incomplete. Darian Garcia's toss just high. A little bit too much wind underneath that. Difficult pass for a quarterback, rolling to his weak side. Trying to reach back and throw. Well, Dan, in some of Hoover's games, they haven't... Excuse me. They haven't been totally anemic on offense, just giving up so many points. They've been able to score, except in a few games. Under pressure. Ball's on the ground. Everybody's diving for it. Looks as though the Patriots came up with it. But it's going to be a five-yard loss. And that'll bring up a third and 15. The Patriots dodge a bullet on that. That could have looked like about a 20-yard loss, but they were able to get it back up a little bit and retain possession. Student section. Looking in your direction. Make some noise. It's darn. I think that's going to be the last play of the quarter to the Patriots. I think they're going to let it run out and uh, try and draw one up here. Several of the Patriot players, as you see, have come over to the sideline, and they're letting the clock run down. Two seconds, one second, and that concludes the first quarter of play. That takes us to the end. So the rest of the Patriot players on offense will join their teammates, talking to the coaching staff. Highlanders will do the same. One quarter in the books, McLean up 6 nothing. And the Highlander rushing game has been very impressive thus far. Yes, it has. And uh, when they get the ball back, I would uh, think they would be trying to go back to that a little bit more. That was successful on the first drive. Daniel and I were theorizing what uh, the uh, tables and tents and such were at the Western end zone. There was nobody there at the JV game and the, uh, between games. And now it seems to be filling up. I'm guessing food might be involved. I'm guessing parents of the seniors, senior night festivities. As you see the crowd on the opposite side, on the McLean side, they've got a terrific turnout tonight for senior night. Final regular season game. Playoffs will begin next week. I'm sure it'll be an interesting weekend of seating meetings and anxiety among coaches. Oh, those seating meetings are tense. Tomorrow morning, I think at 9 o'clock, down in Porterville is where those will take place. Patriots send three receivers to the top of your screen. Rolling out, looking for someone, and he go over. Oh, he, no, he did overthrow his receiver. So Garcia's had a tough time when that play call sends him to his left, trying to reach back and throw. Well, Difficult his, throw. His deep men were covered, and he did have a man open. I don't think he was going to get first down yardage, but he was going to get half of it anyway. And fourth and 15. Now the Patriots will send their punt unit onto the field. And the offensive unit comes off. There's Darian Garcia, the quarterback, is deep. Got to get somebody off the field here. Darian Garcia on the punt. Okay, they got 11 now. There was some confusion. They're going to have to get the punt off here. They're cutting it kind of close.
Highlanders have Desir Newhouse deep. He'll set up at about his 15 yard line. Bunt going right to him and it's gonna take a McLean, initially a McLean bounce and then a Hoover bounce to about the five yard line where they will down the football. Newhouse did a good job getting out of the way. It looked for a second like he entertained thoughts of picking it up and trying to make something happen. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to replicate Marcellus Armstrong from back in the day. Terrific McLean returner, also a standout at Fresno State. Yeah, Armstrong, I think he led the Valley in rushing on a team that won two games. Right after Chuck Toasty left McLean, they, they went down a little bit. So the Highlanders at a tough spot, first and 10 from their five yard line. Noah Zamora calling signals from the end zone. They keep it on the ground and they've been very successful doing that and they'll get maybe three yards. Yeah, there was a hole, it opened and it closed real quick. Yeah, it did very quickly. Zamora coming back in with a play call. Gain of one on the play. Since their first couple of drives that had been largely on the run, this is Newhouse. He's got the first down, still on his feet, wrestled out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. I think the pace were expecting another run between the tackles. They were really dug in. That's the third time they've given the football to Newhouse. One he goes in motion and he's had success now on two of those runs. So first and 10 now for the Highlanders. Newhouse in motion, penalty flag. Had some movement on the Highlander line. And they're gonna erase a little bit of that gain. Move the football back to about the 14 yard line. No, no round. No round. False start. On number 77. That's a five yard field. He's going first down. And moves them slightly back, first and 15 from the 14. Quick out, Newhouse bobbles it, now trying to get away from a couple of defenders, and he's not able to do so. Yeah, we, that was a face mask tackle here, Dan, and the officials uh, missed out on that one. I don't know how, saw that all the way up here. It was one of those that wasn't the tackle was not made by the face mask, but it it helped out. No one lost even more yardage for the Highlanders. So it's second down in 19. Highlanders have to get the ball up to about the their 30 yard line. For a first down, Zamora on the delayed draw. Doesn't get much at all. Highlanders did a good job expecting that. Uh, the, uh, Patriots, pardon me. Hoover's bringing an extra DB. Big third down play for the Highlanders. Third and about 18. Football on the 11 yard line. Yeah, Hoover's definitely gonna give up a short game. They just don't wanna give up anything deep. They don't wanna give up first down yardage. Patriots playing soft in the secondary. Zamora now flushed from the pocket. He's gonna run, gets a block, gets it up to about the 15 yard line, but no more. A Little bit of breathing room. 
So one would expect them to punt the football away to the Patriots. That was good pursuit by the Highlanders too, or the Patriots, because they were playing soft. They were they didn't want to give up the first down, and that was a chance. There, Zamora is a shifty runner. Hoover did a good job on that, and they're going to have the ball in good field position. Freddie Lamas deep in uh, to receive this punt. He sets up at uh, about the Hoover 39-yard line. Ball will bounce around midfield. And it's going to be down at the Hoover 48-yard line. And a decent punt by McLean, and the Patriots have the ball at the 48-yard line. Real good field position. Some of their best of the night thus far. 7.43 remaining here in the second quarter. McLean took their opening drive in for a touchdown. They're on top six to nothing over the Patriots. After that opening drive, the Highlanders have not got uh, much going offensively. The well, Hoovers clearly made adjustments to stop their run game. Over at San Joaquin Memorial, Memorial's got a uh, seven nothing lead over at Sanger uh, late in the first quarter. And Bullard leads Edison six to three out at Sunnyside. And one will certainly be watching tonight, the Torres Madera South game from up in Madera. That's got second place written all over it. Darian Berry, the Hoover quarterback, big gain of about 12, 13 yards as he brings it up across the 40 yard line of the Highlanders. They'll spot him at the 38. And by the time McLean realized what was happening over there, he had, he already had eight yards of that. By the time they headed it off, he was able to get a, a nice gain. Good job by Garcia. So first and 10 for the Patriots from the McLean 38 yard line. Yeah, I mentioned that game in uh, Madera. Both those teams are six and three. If the Stallions win that game, that'll be Matt Johnson's uh, best season so far up at Madera South. Terrific. In motion, takes the handoff. Good head of steam and uh, good, good surge forward by the Patriot defensive line. Little gust of wind came up and blew something away, and neither one of us Took seemed my to know what it was. Ah, at my feet. <laughs> there we go. Kevin Moultrie, the running back on that last play. They terrific pass down inside the 15 yard line, brought down at about the 10 yard line. Nice setup there by the Patriots. And was that Moultrie bringing that ball down? Just I a sophomore. Once again, regional students, elementary and middle school, make your way into the Highlanders football tunnel. Thank you. Diamond, 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 diamond. Now it's Hoover keeping the football on the ground, moving the pile inside the five yard line. They carried that about six yards after contact. Taking Highlander tacklers with them. Oh, they got all the way down to the two-yard line on that, Dan. Patriots made a quarterback change. This is now Pete Garcia at quarterback. Full house backfield. Garcia with a keeper. He's got plenty of running room, and he hit at the line of scrimmage, bounces off. And he's in for the touchdown, and we're tied. Yeah, that was a good hit right outside of the uh, end zone, and he just was able to roll off of it. So Pete Garcia with the keeper. And it appears Hoover's going to go for two.
Darian Garcia back in at quarterback for the Patriots. He's going to throw it. He's got a man open. It's complete, and the Patriots have the lead. Ken, that worked out real well for the Patriots, but I've rarely seen where a team will go for two after just tying the game up. I'm not uh, well versed on the Patriots kicking game. Well, we've talked during the season. It's surprising that we don't see strong kickers like we have in years past. Many of the teams opting to go for two, and when they do kick, the kicking games are fairly iffy, and that's surprising. Yeah, and it, it surprises me because a good kicking game makes such a big difference on kickoffs, and when you get to a point when you're down by two points late in the game, and uh, if you have a guy that can kick the ball inside 35 or 40 yards, it j it's a, just a huge help, and I do not know why this is not emphasized more. But those of you that have listened to me rant about this for years, this comes as no surprise. <laughs> so the Patriots on the two-point conversion with an 8-6 lead here in the second quarter. And that ball's going to go out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Travels out of bounds right on the play. And Dan, the Patriots getting a lead like this uh, well into the second period. This has got to be such a momentum boost because when McLean got the opening kickoff and just took it right down and scored with really little opposition, it was like, okay, this does not look good at all for the Patriots. And, and here they are with the lead. They've made adjustments. They've stopped the inside run game very effectively. McLean has had to put uh, men in motion and give them the football to run around the edge and try to soften that Hoover defense to no avail. So we'll see what the Highlanders can do here. High snap, loose football, and it's blown dead. We heard a whistle up here, but I don't know if it was heard down, down on the field or not. Ed's coming back. I think the player was stopped. May have even been down when the football came loose. But the Patriots have once again shown they've made very effective adjustments on defense. That was an unusual play. I, I thought, I definitely heard a whistle. I did too. I think what McLean was looking at. Well, is there's some confusion here because they've, on the far sideline, put a one back on the marker. That also creates confusion up here. Give going to Newhouse, the man in motion, trying to get around in. Nothing doing. Four Patriots ride him out of bounds. Good read there by the Patriots. They were able to get outside and uh, close that real quick. You know, it's almost as if they whistled the play dead on that first play. And that's why we get a repeat first down. So that, now it's, that could be. So scoreboard is showing third down, but the sideline marker showing second down. We're going to go with the sideline marker since he's right next to an official. Yeah, that also is confusing. Now they got a third down. Okay. All is right in the world. <laughs> third and ten for the Highlanders. Zamora barking out his signals. McLean's going to take a timeout. And there is some frustration. Because the Highlanders were not all on the same page. And yeah, there was a lot of confusion on that side of the line. So 3.50 to go until halftime. Hoover has just taken an 8-6 lead on McLean. The Highlanders having scored on their very first possession of the night. Patriots have just come back after fielding that punt and putting a short drive together. 
And we're now looking at a third and 10 for McLean. Coming out of the huddle, the Highlanders still look a little bit out of sync here. There were some frustrated players when that timeout was called. And they're going to resume uh, their huddle. Back to second down again here. Officials on the near sideline talking to the Hoover coaches, trying to explain the situation. Okay, I think you're correct. I think they probably ruled that a no play. The first play. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you once again to Mr. Kevin Clifton. I don't think I've ever seen that before either. An inadvertent whistle, they usually don't have a do over. So it's second down and 10, ball at the 35 yard line of the Highlanders. Patriots showing blitz, here they come. Screen is the counter up near the 40 yard line and a first down. That's Sing Sulin again. We haven't seen him in a while. But he was very effective early and effective there with a first down for the Highlanders as they get the football up to the 46-yard line. It took a long time for the, court, the ball to get from the quarterback to the uh, receiver. It was only about a five-yard toss, just a little loop. But that's the way you counter the blitz. Yeah. You either throw to the side they're blitzing from or just throw right over the blitz. Or have a one-step quarterback draw. Very true. And Sule gets the ball once again. He has stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. We'll see how they spot it. And he about had his helmet and his shoulder pads all uh, taken off in one grab. Well, the way Hoover's rushing, it's time for play action. Something to freeze that rush. Mm -hmm. seen several games where uh, teams would just be so effective in the blitz and said just a little screen or an out pass or a short quarterback draw and that makes them honest real quick. Quick out pass, Newhouse darting, dodging, may have picked up a yard, perhaps two, probably ran 20. Sure did, one out and jigged a little bit. Gain of two on the play, brings up third down and eight. They give him two, makes it third and eight for the Highlanders. Mentioned this a few weeks ago, but one of the best pump fake and play action quarterbacks I ever saw at the high school level was Sergio Toscano at Roosevelt, Roosevelt High. Yeah. He was terrific. It started uh, prior to Jeff Tedford at uh, Fresno State. Did a really nice job out there. With the fake, he's got his man. Going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. Gustavo Castaneda. That was some good stout tackling by the Patriots. It looked like he was going to have first down yardage. And uh, once there was contact made, two men came in and just shut that down. About a minute 10 left in the half urgency on the part of the Highlanders as they would like to push this one downfield and try to get some more points before this half ends. Fourth and two and they're going for it. I would have taken their time on this one just in case they didn't. You don't want to give the Pates much time. Newhouse in motion. They give it to Singsule. He's up very close to the marker. I think he's got the first down. His, his initial uh, burst got him the first down. Some of the Patriots celebrating as they came out of the scrum. But that is going to indeed be a first down. 42 seconds left on the clock. The Highlanders took a timeout. First down. Or at that point where the band is in the end zone, getting ready for halftime. That always tells you you don't have much time left on the clock to try and punch something in. It appears the band is, uh, has some sort of a click because half the band is in the 
west end zone and the other part of the band is in the east end zone. I hope it's nothing serious. Two teams around their coaches. As the Highlanders would like nothing more than to regain this lead going into the locker room at halftime, Hoover would like nothing more than to preserve the lead that they have built here. It's an 8-6 Hoover advantage. 42 seconds left in the half. These into the half momentum, Schistel. If McLean scores here, the momentum's back on their side. If the Patriots can hold them off, they've got the ball start in the second half, and they will have a lead at halftime, which the exception of the uh, Sager West game, they haven't had all season. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Ball on the 43, first and 10 for your Highlanders. Zamora going up top. He's got a receiver. Ball falls short. Looked like some jersey tugging, but we don't see any penalty flags. Zamora looking for Stewart. I think what we may have had is the ball was quite a ways away. Yes. I, that's what I... An uncatchable ball. Yeah. So second and 10 with 37 seconds left. Plenty of time. Zamora throwing the football. Caught. 20-yard line, ridden out of bounds at about the 17. Big game for the Highlanders. Zamir Newhouse, the receiver. 30 ticks left on the clock. I think the Highlanders have one timeout left. Am I correct, Dan? They have one. Hoover has two. Ball at the 16-yard line. Highlanders are going to take a timeout. Some confusion on the play call there. Yeah, they they had taken a timeout and the clock kept running. I think they're they're pro they had uh, after the first down. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was bad clock management by the Highlanders or inattention by the officials. 13 seconds have run down off the clock. Just 17 ticks left here in the first half. McLean trying to wrap up the half by putting some points on the board. Patriot defense on the field. There you see the Highlanders break the huddle over on the far sideline around their coaching staff. So up from where we have not. 17 seconds remaining in the half. With no timeouts left, and the uh, Highlanders cannot take a sack. They've got to be in the end zone or get out of bounds. High snap to Zamora. Quick toss into the end zone. Intercepted by the Patriots. And the defensive back falls down at the one-yard line. And that will give the Patriots just a big momentum lift going into the half. 8-6 Hoover, our score. The Patriots have just intercepted the ball in the end zone. And Dan, they're fired up here on the sidelines. Indeed, they are. Gets it to about the two. So the ball is placed at about the one yard line. 11 seconds left of the half. Now Fred, to safety here could tie it up. I hadn't considered that. So if you're McLean, do you bring the house? Bring the house and uh, the Patriots just need to uh, get out to the just inside the red and uh, not do anything really stupid. Well, the Patriots elect to take a timeout. Good. They, they want to talk this over. 
They want to have a little bit more discussion about it. So a tough break for the Highlanders, having the pass intercepted in the end zone. Zamora threw into double coverage. That was a tough pass. Now the Patriots you have to put get a big yourself, break. Yeah, you have to put yourself in a position when if, if you're not going to catch a pass, it needs to go out of bounds or out of the end zone. You just don't want something like that to happen. What was it last weekend, a Weber State game? There were four punts in which the snap went over the punter's head for a safety. First, really? time in, first time in college football history. Four safeties four. on bad punt snaps. That was Weber. Yep. Who are they playing? Uh, Montana State, I believe. Okay. Patriots running the football. Where Sean Chambers is the, quarter, the quarterback now, the former. Monta yeah, from Montana State. Former uh, Kermit High quarterback in Wyoming. That's going to end the first half of play. So the Patriots just run the clock out. And they're going to move over to their meeting area. So they got an 8 6 lead over the McLean Highlanders here in the final regular season game of the 2022 season. The McLean uh, Eye in the Sky brain trust up here to our left uh, left the press box, and they are not happy campers. Did not appear to be. You're right. So halftime is upon us here at McLean Stadium. 8-6 Hoover, our score. And we're going to tell you more about some of the great things happening at CMAC and be back for a plenty of additional football action in another 15 minutes. What I love about CMAC is that they provide me with the knowledge, the equipment, the space, to express myself, to amplify my voice, to share my story, my story, my story. Go to cmac.tv slash my story to learn more. Fresno is building newer, safer bike lanes across the city. These protected cycle tracks provide a physical barrier between the bike lane and motor vehicle traffic, creating a safer cycling zone. These cycle tracks will instill confidence in riders, yet everyone on the road is still required to obey all traffic laws. Cyclists should still ride responsibly and exercise caution when riding in the protected lanes. For motorists, this means that the roads you've been driving on may be changing. Be on the lookout for new parking, driveway, and intersection changes. For residents and tenants on these changing roads, be aware that mail, trash, and parking locations may move as well. Fresno is excited to provide diverse transportation options to our residents. Sharing the road is easy. Learn more at fresno.gov forward slash BPAC. What if I told you there was one word commonly used to dehumanize Native American women and that Webster's Dictionary defines this word as offensive and outdated? What if I told you an entire town was named after this word? That word is squaw. My name is Roman Raintree, and I'm a member of the Dunlap Band of Mono Indians and Chordanumni people. My mother, Gina Charlie, is my inspiration for working to rename our community. When we use language that degrades and dehumanizes people, it sends the message that their lives are not worth protecting. According to the National Congress of American Indian Policy Research Center, nearly half of Native American women report having experienced sexual violence, and over one-third will be raped in their lifetimes. In California, cases of missing and murdered indigenous women are among the highest in the nation. Our towns and landmarks should be named after things and people we honor and celebrate. The routine use of an offensive slur is contrary to our shared values. Please join us and amplify our call to respect our community and end the use of this derogatory term for geographic naming. To learn more, visit the website below. Thank you.
One of the key goals of the project, Clean Shared Mobility Network, is to try and provide benefits to disadvantaged communities. In Fresno, that's Southwest, so that's our project area. We have a network of charging stations that we're installing throughout the disadvantaged communities. To date, so far, most of them have gone into Fresno Housing Authority sites, and we still are evaluating other sites, and we're getting recommendations and suggestions on where to site future charging stations. There's the car sharing. That program, it allows people, it's based on an app, and it allows people to basically rent a car for short periods of time. And those are typically people that don't even have a car. They're all electric, so that helps with the environment. The bike sharing works in a similar fashion, where you have an app and you can rent the bikes. The battery here is swappable, it allows us to station the bikes anywhere. The bike, as well as all of the equipment, is uh, GPS and geocoded, so we know where the bikes are at. We're going to stagger the deployment. We're not putting all 200 bikes out at once, especially in the beginning. Then we have an electric medical van that are ADA compliant and so they can transport to medical facilities. It's a five year project. The step that we're at now is deploying the vehicles. We plan on doing that this fall. So once we've deployed the vehicles, then we go through a process of dynamic review. So we'll see where they're being used and not used so that we can locate, relocate the vehicles where they're most efficient. What's really unique is how we've combined car sharing, bike sharing, van pool, all into one program. That's pretty much what's unique about our project. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know either, but now they can cross in any direction at pedestrian scrambles. Pedestrian scrambles are intersections that allow pedestrians to cross in every direction, including diagonally. These intersections make this possible by having an exclusive pedestrian phase in the traffic lights. To use a scramble as a pedestrian, press the walk button when you arrive at an intersection and wait for the current green light cycle to complete. When the walk signal lights up, cross in any direction of the intersection. Drivers and cyclists should continue to focus on traffic signals and only proceed when the traffic lights are green. Sharing the road is easy. Learn more at fresno.gov forward slash BPAC. Hey there, I'm Mark Jackson. And I'm BJ Yabisu. And, and we're, we're from, from the, the pie, pie shop. shop. Take a bite. No, not that kind of pie. A product incubator. Whether you are a fledgling inventor or an existing company, the Pie Shop can help you incubate your business. Tired of tinkering in your garage on your idea? Make, Make the, the pie, pie Shop your shop. We offer mentorship, workshops, events, services, and dedicated and shared office spaces. We have 8,000 square feet of shop space filled with 3D printers and other tools to help you develop your prototype. And our partner, Blue Dolphin Engineering, a company that has 20 years of experience in prototypes and inventions, is right next door. A nonprofit, we're located in downtown Fresno at 1755 Broadway Street at the Peerless Building. The Pie Shop is open during normal business hours. For more information, visit us at thepieshop.org. Or give us a call at 559-481-5004. In Southwest Fresno, it's just been this barren land forever. And trees are a representation that not only life is becoming involved into that particular area, but that there's a sense of care for people in that area. Now, the object itself may be small as a tree or as a small seed, but the symbolism of what it is, it's huge. Because if you water that seed, and if you water that tree, it grows into something that's huge. All total, this project planted over 405 trees in southwest Fresno, and it's just really made a lot of improvement in the area. This was part of the uh, Southwest Urban Expansion Project as part of the TCC grant. You know, it was just specifically identified 
uh, for this region that's uh, underserved, some of the poorest air quality in the area. It really benefits the residents here, but it also benefits the businesses in the area. It benefits the air quality. So it's really a regional benefit, more so than just right here on this particular street. We're uh, reconstructing the irrigation to modern irrigation systems that are, that are drought tolerant. We're making sure that we're planting the correct tree in the correct place and the trees that are, are gonna thrive in this environment. All right, we're gonna put a little dirt in. It may seem small to others, but it's huge because of what it represents. It represents new beginning, a new beginning that one day will become a life change for so many people, especially in an area that's disenfranchised. There's transformation that's happening and it's happening because of projects like this. So we're grateful for it. We can't wait to finally have some, some Kool-Aid under the shade. You may have noticed new traffic signals on the road. These are pedestrian activated signals, or hawks. These signals make it safer for pedestrians to cross busy streets. How are hawks different from conventional traffic signals? These are found in locations where children are likely to cross the street.
Lane Highlander Marty Ben. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, give it up for our Revolution Pole performance from our McLean and Hoover cheer team. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our Revolution Ball performance from your very own McClay and Hoover cheer teams! Thank you to all the regional schools that were here. Thank you for all the performances. Enjoy the second half. Thank you, Prof. Federal, for taking us through the halftime. Hi, everybody. This is Sarah. And that's Tea, and we're Pedal Junkies. And we're here to tell you all about Fresno County Bicycle Coalition. The Fresno County Bicycle Coalition is an organization that promotes safe bicycling for everyday transportation and recreation in Fresno County. We do this by providing community events that promote safe cycling. We offer smart cycling classes, community rides, and bicycle advocacy all over the county of Fresno. Want to know more about Fresno County Bicycle Coalition? Go to fresnobike.org and check it all out. See, See you in traffic. traffic. Learn how to make videos at CMAC. Get more info at CMAC.tv. You are what you litter. Coffee cups, cigarette butts, food wrappers, soda cans. Litter heads are a major problem. But we all have a choice. Don't be a litter head. One vision, one mission, one Fresno. Together, we can beautify Fresno. Find out how at beautifyfresno.org. What I love about CMAC is that they provide me with the knowledge, the equipment, the space to express myself, to amplify my voice, to share my story, my story, my story. Go to cmac.tv slash my story to learn more. <laughs> A community garden, it brings so much more than we even envisioned that it would bring. 
This is the Yosemite Village Community Garden and Urban Farm Incubator Program. This front part of the garden is the community garden. Uh, so there are spaces that community members can come out and check out for them to grow food for their own families. If they need coaching or they need help on what to plant and season or get access to seeds, uh, we also help them do that. The other uh, half of the property in the back, we have a farm incubator program uh, where we work with farmers to give them a half acre of land so that they can start developing their own business plans. They can start farming and getting used to like farming at a little bit larger scale. Our farmer Miguel has been working in farm work labor for over 10 years um, and he had not had the opportunity to start his own business or to get the opportunity to manage his own operation. But he really has a passion for agriculture and so that this is what he hopes to be doing full time. You guys want to go for a walk? We also go into the classrooms and teach in the classrooms and then also bring kids from schools to the garden to learn here. We have volunteer days every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So if someone wants to start gardening and they don't feel like they know how to do it or they're not comfortable with getting a garden space yet, but they want to learn, they can always come and join us during those times. Or if you're a future farmer looking for some space. Welcome back to McLean Stadium where the host Highlanders trail the Hoover Patriots 8-6 here in the opening of the second half of play. Ball's on the tee. We're ready to kick it off. Highlanders kick it off. Hoover will begin possession in the second half. And they start with your favorite. Uh, ball on the ground. Something crazy to make wild things happen. I would like to go a little bit more up the middle with a few little uh, small bounces to it. But this is all right. I like it much better than the pooch kick. Well, tonight's rivalry night up and down the valley. They call this the Revolution Bowl, the rivalry between Hoover and McLean. We've got some good games going up and down the valley, Fred. Yeah, uh, Sager's making Memorial sweat a little bit uh, just uh, up the road at Memorial. Memorial leads 28 to 14 at halftime, but this is the first time that Memorial's been challenged in several weeks. But I think they just have a little bit too much for it, more firepower. And uh, out at Central, Clovis North has a surprising 28 to 21 lead on Central there in the fourth quarter. Back to the game. Patriots keeping it on the ground. They pick up about five to start the second half. The Patriots close that first half. That interception was just a really good momentum builder for the Patriots because hey, when you come in one and eight, uh, you're looking for something. And they made it, they've got a few breaks and uh, they're taking advantage of them right now. McLean seems to be a little bit uh, on their heels and confused. Second out and five for the Patriots. Continue. They've got the first down. They push it up over the 45 yard line. And Dan, in a game like this, a team that's been down for as long as the Patriots, they have a lead right now, and McLean just doesn't seem to be in sync, and Hoover's capital, uh, capitalizing on that. It's building their momentum, and the Highlanders are, hey, we're supposed to be the better team here. What's happening? They've been those last two plays were out of the Wildcat formation, and it looks like they're going to do it again. Receiver in motion. He takes the ball. He's across midfield and steps out of bounds just across the 50-yard line. Elijah Johnson. I would have liked to see him cut in on that. He, I think he could have got another four or five yards, got close to first down yardage. He had a little, little bit of a seam there. So brings up second down and five for the Patriots. Hoover leading eight to six. Second down right from the 50. And again, showing a different look. Couple of wing backs. First down across the 45. I like this new look that Hoover's been showing here so far this second half. Romero, the big back who had some terrific gains on their scoring drive. First and 10 from the McLean now to the near side. Ball's on the ground. They'll take a five-yard loss. Very costly bad snap. And the Patriots had plus yards every play coming out of the half until that. 
Snap goes over the running back. He's not able to recover it. However, it's a loss of yardage for the Patriots. Loss of five, second and 15. Looking to see what kind of a formation they're going to set up in here. But it does appear they're going to continue with the Wildcat. Completely different look than what we saw at any time in the first half. Give goes to that receiver in motion, and he slips and goes down back at the 45 and another five, well, about a seven-yard loss. So two very costly plays for the Patriots who were really moving the football effectively. Yeah, that, that last one, that didn't look good at all. Darian Garcia, who started the game at quarterback, now comes onto the field as they'll go back into a pistol formation. Quarterback about five yards back of the line of scrimmage. No Empty backs back beside field. him, exactly. Bringing pressure. He escapes the pressure. Long throw, wide open receiver, and it's over his head. And we had flags down anyway back here. We're going to have a hold on Hoover. He was open, though. He was and appeared to just watch the football rather than sprint to the spot. <laughs> yeah. Holding number 52 on the offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. So the Highlanders decline the penalty. Brings up a big fourth down opportunity here for them. Ball spotted at the... Hoover 45 yard line. Hoover held the ball there, uh, Dan, for four minutes uh, coming out of the, the locker room and they picked up about 18 yards with in that four minutes. They were doing real good for a while and the last three plays were just disasters. Newhouse deep to receive the punt. He's going to get an opportunity. He fields it at about the 18-yard line. He gets away from one tackler, picks up only about two yards before being brought down at the 20-yard line. Good coverage by the Patriots. They got upfield in a hurry. So the Highlanders with their first offensive possession of the second half. Trailing 8-6. Now after the Highlanders moved the ball real well, the, uh, their first drive of the first half and their last drive of the first half, we'll see what they can do now. Noah Zamora, the McLean quarterback, coming onto the field. Patriots very effectively adjusting de their defense to take away what worked at various times for the Highlanders, and they go back to what they started the game with, pounding the ball on the ground. The Highlanders seem to be having a real problem with the uh, center and the quarterback. The ball's been uh, off to the side. It's been over his head more time than it's been uh, directly to him. Sig Sold in the ball carrier, picked up about a yard. Up Call it about second and nine. Is it just past the times? Uh, have I lost it completely? I still like the quarterback down on the center. Yeah, I think I don't that know, shows Dan. we're getting old, Fred. Uh -huh. Zamora, quick out. Receiver has a block. Picks up about six yards. He's going to be three, maybe four yards shy of the first down marker. Alexis Conseco on the receiving end of that pass. That bit about getting old, no, I am old. It's just getting <laughs> older. Can't sugarcoat that. <laughs> Glad you're with us here on CMAC for North Yosemite League football. The Hoover Patriots on top of the McLean Highlanders here in the third quarter, 8-6. Each team with a touchdown. McLean missed their conversion. Hoover made theirs. 
Okay, Hoover's, Hoover's getting pretty close here to loading things up right behind the line. Well, we've seen play action this way, but not this time as Sinsuli took the handoff but slipped and went down immediately. And that's a loss of about three yards. Correction, that was Newhouse who was in the backfield. Well, looked like nine. he was trying to make a cut right when the ball got there, and he just, you know, lost his balance. Looked like he probably came down on top of the ball, too. Maybe a little bit of wind got knocked out. So it brings up a fourth and eight. Highlanders are going to punt this football away. T.J. Oh, McMillan deep oh, to field the punt. It's a low punt. It's going to roll to McMillan. He grabs it at the 45. He picks up about five with the midfield stripe. And he goes down, and that's where Hoover will start from. Well, we certainly want to express our gratitude to our sponsor tonight. This broadcast is brought to you in part by State Center Community College District. SCCCD covering Fresno, Reedley, Oakhurst, Madera and Clovis. We thank State Center Community College District for your support. Well, Dan McLean right now, they don't she seem to show the fire that we'd seen out of them in other games this season. Even last week in that uh, a loss to Sunnyside, they showed a lot more fire than what we've seen tonight. Playing soft in the secondary, expecting Hoover's gonna run the football. They're gonna go to the air. Darian Garcia brought down for a loss of five. The Patriots just don't seem to have much of a short passing game. They're looking to go deep, but very few short passes. Or maybe I'm being uh, hypercritical tonight. You? <laughs> Perish the thought. Patriots put a couple of receivers, top of your screen, keeping it on the ground. Pick up about two yards. It's still going to leave them 12 shy of a first down. Coming up on third down. That had potential, I thought, right off the bat to go somewhere. McLean did a good job uh, stretching it out and bringing him down. Agreed. Darian Garcia in at quarterback on this series. Patriots operated from the Wildcat on their opening series of the half. 3.52 remaining in the third quarter. Still an 8-6 game, Hoover on top. Patriots trying for their second win of the season here on the final night of the regular season of high school football. Rolling to his weak side, he's gonna tuck it and run. He's got, up. Oh, he's got a first down. And picks up five, maybe seven additional before being wrestled out of bounds. Garcia did a good job on that, too. McLean was completely off balance on that. That was some good blocking there, too, by a Hoover's line. Looked like they had McLean outnumbered about two to one on that. So a big gain for the Patriots. We're at the 33-yard line of the Highlanders. That's got to be their biggest third down play of the night. First and 10 from the 33. I believe they're back in the Wildcat. They are in that double wing formation. That is Romero. May have picked up a yard. Direct handoff to Devin Dumala. Making the tackle of Christopher Serra. The difficulty, Fred, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems as though when they go into that double wing that in the Wildcat, they're doing the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. Very, They become very predictable. Yeah, I'd, no argument here. McLean just hasn't adjusted too well. Once again, out of the Wildcat, but it works for the Patriots this time. Another first down, and that ball's down to the 17-yard line. Terrific run by the Patriots. I don't think it's stacked a little too heavy on one side on that Wildcat. You know, it leaves you outnumbered, and that's what happened there. Well, 
Well, it's working, so they're going to stick with it, it looks like. I would, too. Longmala, the back in the Wildcat. He's going to keep it. Got a hole off left tackle, and he's going to pick up about four. I'm the same way on that, Dan. I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep with that until they stop it. it is second down. And they haven't been able to at all thus far on the night. Dan, we're about to have some uh, green powder thrown. This is not going to be fun. This is my least favorite thing of the high school football season. And I yep. don't understand why activities directors don't understand the concept of a press box. Uh, yeah. McLean had it. Penalty flag flies. Play's going to gain about three yards, but it looks like it's coming back. Let's hear the call. Some uh, holding penalties are about a 90% correct guess, Dan. And that was one of them. Highlander High Nation student section. Do it again, make some noise. It's third down. Well, it's going to be marched back. And that's a blow to the Patriots who were moving the football very effectively. But it's going to be pushed all the way back to the 27 yard line. Dan, that was a fast-moving third Indeed quarter. Indeed it was. The third quarter is over. Very fast third quarter. This play now moves into the fourth quarter. Still 8-6, Hoover on top. So the third quarter concludes here at McLean Stadium with Hoover on top, 8-6. The two schools gathered around their coaches before they switch ends. And the Patriots have got to be feeling pretty good. The run game has worked very, very well for them here in the second half. Teams have changed ends. Hoover with the football now. Pump fake. Throwing for the end zone. In the end zone. Deflected at the last second by the McLean defensive back. Darian Garcia airing it out to Eliza Johnson. Pass ball is incomplete. Highlander Hype Nation student section. You brought the powder, now you gotta bring the noise. Get loud, it's third down! So with the Patriots, it's third and 19. They have to get the football down to the five yard line. Rolling, throw, wide open receiver, brings it down. He's fighting to get up near the first down marker, but he's gonna be about two yards short. So the pass play connects. Patriots 
Will they send the punt unit out, or are they going to go for it? Looks like it's fourth and about four to go. Balls at the 11-yard line. Fourth and about four, and there's green dust everywhere, Dan. Well, I feel bad for our camera crews. Now we've got people up there trying to clean the cameras because of this ridiculous high school yeah, gimmick. How did, how did this get started? I don't know. I wish it would end. Uh, yeah. There's some activities director, or I don't know who they are, but they're not thinking. It's happened on both sides of the stadium. Yeah, this is a, a concept I could do without. You know, the, uh, happening on the north side is one thing. There's no press box over there. There's not expensive camera equipment trying to cover a game live. But we've got students pointing at us and laughing about it. Yeah. Patriots. They're going to go for it. Full house backfield. Looking to throw the football, but the play is stopped by a penalty. Good opportunity now for the Patriots. And by fourth down. I mean, this, Dan, this is less than a 30 yard field goal right here pretty much in the middle of the field. And that's why I cannot understand why programs don't value place kickers. Oh. And you know every campus so has got a, a student who two. can effectively kick. Just look at their soccer teams. And you have coaches that should be able to uh, coach a good kicker. So on fourth down, Patriots going for it. Three wide left. Heavy pressure from McLean, short pass. Can he cut back and get the yardage necessary? He looks like he's got the first down. It's going to be close. Let's see where it's spotted. This will be a big first down for the Patriots if they get it. For the Patriots, would appear they have the first down. A lot of celebrating on the Hoover sideline. Yeah, he was able just to push it through. I thought they were, might have to have a measurement on that one. That looked, uh, looked close. So the Patriots now first and goal. Balls at about the eight yard line. They're keeping it on the ground. Highlanders stop it at the line of scrimmage. Second out and goal from the seven yard line. Yeah, the Highlanders have got to make a stand now. That third quarter went fast. They're not going to have too many possessions left. And the way that their offense have moved, this is uh, almost desperation time. Patriots having a little bit of difficulty getting this play call in. A lot of time running off the clock. Keeping it on the ground, right up the middle. It's still moving They're forward. They're still moving. They're down near the goal line. Patriot players celebrating as if it's a touchdown, but we have no signal from the officials. I believe the football will be spotted at the one-yard line. Yeah, these uh, Patriot offensive line, they're just getting low and shoving the Highlanders back. And Hoover's not wasting any time now. They're up to the ball quickly. Just don't jump. Third and goal. Highlanders stop them cold at the line. Brings up fourth down. This is a huge play for the McLean defense. They even lost about a half on that one, Dan. 
Patriots got to do what they did on second down there, just to get a little bit lower and push. Huge play for McLean. Again, that full house backfield. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's got a gap. He's in the end zone. Darian Garcia with a touchdown for Hoover. Now do the Patriots have a kicker? They could almost make this a margin a little too great to overcome if they could put one on. So Darian Garcia over from two yards out. That extends the Patriots lead to 14-6. They're going for two, trying to add to it. They definitely need to make this one. Not as much as McLean needs to stop him. Flush from the pocket, down near the end goal line. He's, he's, in. In. he's in for the two-pointer. He gets Flag in for the two-pointer. Flags, flags are on the ground, though. Holding on Hoover. Well, that's going to push the ball all the way back to the 20 yard line. Hoover not deterred. They're still going to go for two. Garcia looking to throw the football. Under pressure. He's got a seam. Not enough for one. And he has wrestled down. And the two point fails. So McLean is. Uh, they still have an opportunity, one possession game. Eight minutes and 24 seconds left on the clock from McLean Stadium. Hoover attempting to pull off the upset, a one and eight team, trying to go out with a victory here, leading 14 to six over the McLean Highlanders. Well, the Highlanders have plenty of time right now. They have an opportunity. We'll see if they can make something. Certainly one of the games we've kept an eye on tonight, the battle in Madeira, Torres High and Madeira South. That would be for second place in the North Yosemite League to the victor there. And Clovis North, that team, they started out slow, but they have really taken the personality of their coaching staff, uh, smash mouth football, and they just don't get down. You know, they... Uh, they just, they seem to have built on adversity earlier in the season. And that's a team, anybody in the playoffs, you don't want to be playing them right off the bat. We'll see if we can get some updates. Patriots rolling it along and Highlanders have to dive on the football at about the 30 yard line. Looked like it did touch an up man, so it would have been a live ball. Clovis North did uh, go out to Central and uh, beat the Grizzlies 35 to 28. Big upset there. Terrific win for Clovis North. And the six and four record. They're going to the playoffs with some momentum. One of these last few games, they're definitely a team to be reckoned with. So the Highlanders in a catch-up mode here. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. High snap. Zamora scrambling. He's gonna take a good 10-yard loss. Zamora, when he had the opportunity, should have gotten rid of that. Clovis West all over Clovis in the fourth quarter, 27 to nothing. Edison uh, putting it to Bullard now, 24 to six in the third quarter. Tough season for Don Arax and the Knights, and uh, Edison seems to be catching fire now. This will put them at six and four, and they can hold that off. They could be a threat in the D2 playoffs. 
Tigers have really been playing some ball the last few weeks. Your offense needs you. Make some noise for your offense. And Roosevelt all over Fresno High in the pig game over at Ratcliffe. That's 33 to six late in the game. That'll be a good way to go out for Dwayne Wright and his Rough Riders. Well, with three wins, that will at least, that will qualify them to go into the playoffs. And the Rough Riders, uh, they've this will give them three wins in a row now, and they could do some damage. Well, not they a, opened not up a they, bad team. The impressive thing about it, and we've talked about it throughout the season, is they have played hard throughout. They they battled through a lot of adversity. But you could tell that the coaching staff was getting through to the players because they didn't quit. They played hard even though they continued to lose there early in the year. But finishing out with three wins is a great way to wrap up the season and take some momentum into the offseason programs and into the next season for the Rough Riders. They were in every game they played. Usually teams with losing records, that's not the case. Zamora, Newhouse to the 34-yard line. And then the Highlanders uh, are in a position now, fourth and five, with uh, coming on six minutes left. They may want to keep a hold of the football here and uh, see what they can do. Nose of the football to the 35. They have to push it across the 40. Time running out for the Highlanders, who trail 14-6 to Hoover High. Memorials put down. some distance between themselves and the Apaches, 35 to 14 in the fourth quarter, and this play is going nowhere, Dan. Newhouse well, breaks a tackle. He's up near the first down. Does he have a first he down? He may have gotten it. Boy, Hoover was all over that, and it looked like that was going to be stopped for a big loss. Wow. He's got the first down. What a job by Nazir Newhouse. That is a temporary game saver. That looked like he was dead to the right, so five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So a first down and 10 for the Highlanders. 5.17 left on the clock. Hoover was offside. This will be a free play. No, nope, they blew it dead. Pass intended for Jordan Stewart, incomplete. Penalty marker on the field, offside. So the Highlanders are going to be given offside five free yards. That will move the ball forward for your Highlanders. And that'll bring up Ladies first and, and five now. Attention, please. Attention, Highlander students. Now is the time to start making calls. Your parents, your guardians, or rides home for the night to pick you up at the conclusion of the game. Once again, Highlander students, now is the time to start making phone calls or text messages for your ride at the end of this game. So Noah Thank Zamora you. bringing the offense up to the line of scrimmage. First and five. Patriots bringing a blitz. Zamora throwing deep. He's got his man. It's deflected out of the arms of Jordan Stewart. Yeah, he had, a, he had two steps on his man, Dan. Ball was there. Big, big play. But the defensive back for the Patriots managed to knock the ball from the arms of Jordan Stewart. Second down and five. They look for Hoover to crowd up on the line again, and uh, they've been bringing heat. It's been pretty successful for the most part for them. Right, here they come up. Linebackers are coming again. They throw the short pass over the top. They've got the first down.
So the catch, which would have been a first down, is negated. And the ball is back to the 20. Thirty-four seconds left. The blitz. Hoover throws over the top of it. They gain about seven yards, just shy of the thirty. Clock continues to run. Forty-four seconds. Pates don't want to make a bad mistake right now. The way they've been playing, uh, like I can see them wanting to let it go to overtime here. Don't, three, don't. Re three receivers, top of your screen, 25 seconds left. They are taking a lot of time on this play. Garcia, under pressure, trying to get some room to run. Bouncing off tacklers, continuing to bounce off tacklers to the 43-yard line. Eight seconds left. Patriots trying to get a timeout. Do not call the clock reads five. Five seconds left on the clock. We're tied at 14 14. Overtime looms. First one we've seen in quite a while. Yep. So the Highlanders having capped their drive with a successful touchdown pass then a pass for a two-point conversion have tied this game at 14. There are five seconds left on the clock. I would like to see that hook and lateral a little uh, reverse right at the end of it. You don't practice that too often though. Five seconds left. Third down and three. That's the least of Hoover's worries. Quick yep. toss, there's the hook and ladder indeed. Out of bounds with no time left. And we are headed to overtime. Time the end around. Which takes us to the end of regulation. So to overtime we go with our score tied at 14. Regulation couldn't sort this one out. We're going to overtime football. Hoover and McLean tying up 14. Let's see if we get an explanation from the official about overtime. So this one's going to overtime, a 14-14 tie. And Fred, we have not seen overtime in quite a long time. You don't see a heck of a lot of this in high school football. Every now and then, and uh, the rules have changed. And I think we're going from the 25-yard line uh, initially in high school football. Overtime went from the 10-yard line, and now it's been pushed to the 25. I could be wrong, but we're going to find out in just a few minutes. If we can, let's take a look here because we had some difficulties and we're away when McLean scored their touchdown. So here's the two-point conversion. A terrific toss that went to, to Desir Newhouse. And Newhouse was also, here's the touchdown pass as Newhouse wide open. And as you said at the time, he had to be waiting forever, feeling very anxious, hoping the ball was going to get to him. So the officials over in front of the McLean bench talking to their head coach. The Hoover players are all locked arm here on the sidelines. It's going to be the closest they're going to come to a victory and since that game with Sanger West that snapped a 19 game losing streak for the Patriots. Well, if my memory is correct, the following week or maybe it was two weeks after, they lost a 14-12 game, did they not? 
to Frisco High. That's it, that's it, yes. So the captains are coming back out. I don't, I don't know if we have the ability to listen in on this conversation where it's explained by the official. Decides what they want to do, we're going to start on the 25 yard line, okay? All right? The visiting team is going to call it in the air. You ready? He called Tails. It is Tails. What you want? So you want to get the ball to them? Okay. So you guys want to receive the ball? What's, what side do you want to defend? The scoreboard, okay. So we're going to defend the scoreboard. Okay, y'all, come, come on. Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Go. Let's go. Well, there you heard it. So we are in overtime now. And the Highlanders will have possession first. You know, the positive about these overtimes is when you're watching a college game, which I will probably be doing a lot of tomorrow, is between the end of regulation and the first play of overtime, you have time to run to the store and come back. It just, <laughs> it takes so long just to get that going. <laughs> so overtime begins at the 25 yard line. Each team's possession will begin at the 25 yard line. And Fred, does there become a possession after which the team has to go for two after a touchdown? In college, yes. Yes. Uh, here, I have no idea, okay. but maybe they have to have in high school, maybe you have to try and go for one after the second overtime. So the Highlanders will begin possession here in overtime. They're going to keep it on the ground, and that play is stopped for a loss of about five yards. Perfect opportunity for the Patriots here. That was good. I don't know what the stats are, but when a team gets a big loss on the first play of overtime, it seems like they don't win the game very often. I don't know what the stats are. I'm sure someone out there does, but I don't. And don't take me seriously on uh, you have to try a one-point kick after the uh, second overtime. I realize I don't have a brilliant audience that's listening in, but I thought I'd better clarify that. <laughs> so second down and 15, ball at the 30-yard line. Hoover showing blitz, and everybody jumped. Clearly, the McLean receiver, I believe that was T.J. McMillan, started running his route before the ball was Office snapped. Offense number five. Five-yard penalty. So there's another Three five yard down. marched off against the Highlanders. So the Highlanders are digging themselves into a deep hole here. Final score update from Minute Maid Park. Brings it a second and 20 now. The Philadelphia Phillies take game one of the World Series. Final score, six to five. So second down and 20 for the Highlanders. Bit of confusion on the formation. Little toss for a toss sweep. No, he's going to throw out of the backfield. He's got a man in the end zone. Comes back. Hoover intercepts it. Just under threw it a bit. And the Hoover defender managed to make the adjustment, come back, and come up with a diving interception. See if the Patriots can close the show, Dan. So if the Patriots get their possession now from the 25-yard line. McLean unable to score. From the 35. Patriots have every offensive opportunity. And if I were calling the plays, I would go back to that Wildcat, see what they can do. And let's see what they do. 
Garcia. He's got a man in motion. He's going to throw the football. Little screen. Picks up about five. Down inside the 20-yard line. And the Patriots' sideline is just uh, dripping with anticipation now. Eric Romero. Holding that pass. Man in motion. They fake. They give it to Romero. And he's got a first down as he crosses the 15-yard line. Right now, the Patriots seeming unstoppable. Football rests at the 14-yard line. Receiver in motion. They keep it on the ground. We've got a penalty flag, and it looks like a hold is going to bring this back. What was a gain of five is going to turn into a loss of five. Holding offense, number 52. That's a 10-yard penalty. Repeat, repeat first down. Correction, a gain of five is negated, and it becomes a loss of 10. Boy, the Patriots' sideline here, you know, they can just, like, almost taste it, Dan. They're just, uh, you know, jumping up and down, and, and then a mistake like that can be such a momentum killer. Well, they've got to got to get past it here. They've been moving the ball, and McLean has been playing on their heels pretty much his whole, well, his whole overtime for sure. Out come the big backs. In go more receivers. They send four receivers to the top of your screen. Garcia, he's got plenty of time. And he slips and goes down back at the 36-yard line. Garcia falls down. Loss of 11 yards. Hot, what looked so promising two plays ago. He wasn't hit, he just lost his, lost his balance here. Yep. The big game final score, Wilson at 33, Fresno 12. So it's a second down play from the 36-yard line for the Patriots. We really don't know anything about their place kicking. What's that? We don't know anything about their place kicking to know where they need to get the ball to for a field goal. No, we haven't seen a place kick for moving team all night. Driven out at the 24-yard line. Nice gain on that. Able to bring it out they need another big gain on this. It's a third down play. A first Six. down would be at about Start. the five yard line. Hey, Receiver in motion. Garcia has a man wide open over the middle, and it was deflected by the Garcia's linebacker. By and that brings up a fourth down play. So where McLean probably felt despair, they now realize opportunity is about to be renewed. And yeah, down in the way the teams, you know, Hoover was moving the ball nicely, but that holding penalty First, kind of blew that one up. But we may be here for a while, the way the teams are seeming to self-destruct here from the 25-yard line. Maybe they should have kept it at the 10. Yeah, exactly. So the two teams huddled around their coaches. You see the McLean Highlanders around their coach, the Patriots getting instructions. Fourth down play. And the ball is at the 24-yard line. Right, so here we go. Pick up 
So here we go, big fourth down play for the Patriots. Four receivers, top of the screen. They're gonna lob it into the end zone. He's got a receiver in and out of the arms. Incomplete. Pass intended for Johnson, incomplete. Was that play whistle dead before? It looked like Hoover moved before the play started, but I, I didn't hear a whistle. Here goes, let's see. False start! Number five on the offense, that's a five yard penalty. Repeat, fourth down. Elijah Johnson moving prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. One more time. Football now at the 29-yard line. With well, their camera there, I've, I've got to stand up to see the corner of the end zone there. 14-14, our score, we're in overtime. We've got a penalty flag on the field, intercepted by McLean in the end zone. But we had another penalty call. McLean Highlander interception. T.J. McMillan III. Well, I'm on the play. Now the ball was intercepted in the end zone. I don't think the young man knew it was fourth down. He could bring it out even if he gets tackled on the five. They get the ball at the 25 yard line again. And he had a lot of room up here. Ball start. What number? What number you had? You can't decline a false start. <laughs> false start. <laughs> That's a five yard nice penalty. Out on the life, Mike. Repeat, it? fourth down. Oh, fourth down, our situation here. I love that. Let's move back to the 34 yard line. 14 14, our score. We're in overtime. McLean unable to score on their possession. Hoover now faced with a fourth and about 31. That means they're going to get another crack at it. Once again, make some noise, high animation. It's fourth down. Pair of receivers on either side. They go with a quick, quick out. Double pass into the end zone, deflected away by Johnson. And the Highlanders will now get their second opportunity. You know what? It looked like Hoover moved again there, but they didn't. They didn't throw the flag. I thought so too. So the Patriots unable to put points on the board. And now McLean will start our second overtime. And some of these linemen and skilled players that are going both ways, they gotta be getting a little tired now. The way that third quarter went, that was such a fast quarter. It might be midnight before we're out of here now. <laughs> so McLean with the football now. As we begin our second Contrast. overtime period. More offense. One more time. For the first and ten. Ball is on the 25. Give going to Newhouse. Trying to get around the far side. Looks as though he's picked up three before running into a wall. Yeah, they'll probably say two yards on the game. Plenty of Patriot tacklers on the stop. Gain of two, second and eight. Penalties have been excruciating for both teams in the first overtime session. Well, McLean's in better shape now than they were in the first overtime. By this time, they had uh, lost about 12 yards. Well, both teams moved the ball well in the first overtime session, only to have penalties drive them backwards. Zamora rolling, looking. He's got no opportunity to throw the football, has to run it, gets up to about the 20-yard line. Samora with the 
Five yards to go. Third down. So it's going to bring up third and five now. Make some noise for your offense. They need you right now. Make some noise for the offense. Got some tired young men out there, Dan. No question. Big play for the Highlanders. They need to get the football across the 15-yard line for a first down. Zamora has a receiver. Oh, that's got to be a pass interference penalty. Oh, yeah. And McLean's going to come out of that for the first down. That may have been one of those ones we were talking about earlier that wasn't a real bad pass interference because he had his man beat. Well, that could be a game-changing penalty right there. Pass interference, defense number six. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. Pass interference, levy against the Patriot defense. So the ball was at the 20, 15-yard penalty. That would we'll down to the five-yard line. That would be my math. but they only marched off 10 yards. Half the distance, I guess. Gotcha. Gotcha. To the balls at the 12 yard line. And the Highlanders have a first down on the play, on the penalty. They hustle up to the line of scrimmage. And Noah Zamora is gonna clap out signals. Zamora with a keeper right up the middle. And he gets across the 10 yard line before being brought down. Zamora with the quarterback keeper. Bryant bringing, bringing him down. Makes it second down. What was that, that rawhide game you were? Was the that? cowhide game down in Visalia? Yeah, that was uh, Redwood beat Mount Whitney 28 to nothing. Not a big surprise. Always a fun night. Cowhide. The okay. cowhide game. Zamora rolling, throwing, touchdown! Penalty flags touchdown. down. It's coming back. Newhouse went up and got it. Patriot coaches. McLean still thinks that they've got a call. Right here, hey, right score. here. He's coming back. Newhouse ran to his head coach to celebrate while the Hoover coaching staff. Holding offense, number 77. Repeat second down. Well, the excitement will dissipate very, very quickly as the ball is marched back. And uh, what appeared to be a go-ahead touchdown being celebrated on one side of the stadium is a crushing penalty that is celebrated on the opposite side of this stadium. Just back and forth. Some of these penalties last night are really uh, prolonging the evening. So the ball is pushed back to the 20-yard line. Second down for the Highlanders. Was it, what do you say, Dan? It was a milk can game. It's Hanford and Lamore, right? The milk can game. Lamore won that game 42 to 15. Beat a wow. good Hanford team by a substantial margin tonight. Wow. Great rivalries up and down the valley. Edison took it to Bullard 31 to 14. Zamora wants to throw. Short pass. Newhouse stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Dan, this is a game that this is a surprising score. Corcoran has got a good team. They were defeated at home by Farmersville tonight, 16 to 12. 
Farmers Ville Aztecs coming on strong at the end of the season. Quirker and Snow was slouch. Big third down play. Zamora, quick toss, but whistles are going to stop this immediately. Another penalty. Five. False start. Offense number five. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Just as we saw with Hoover's possession, McLean hurting themselves with a succession of their own penalties. And a lot of these things at this point, Dan, they're fatigue penalties yeah, yeah. too. Good point, Fred. Dan Taylor, the coach, Fred Clark with you from McLean Stadium. We're in our second overtime session, 14-14 the score. The ex-coach, and that was a long time ago. Oh, you didn't have to tell him that. <laughs> Zamora can't find a receiver. Did dump it off, but it didn't gain enough for a first. McMillan, the receiver on that play, but the Patriots closed very, very quickly and didn't let anything happen. He's out at Mendota. Mendota and Fireball in overtime at 21. So big fourth down play for McLean. Football at the 17 yard line. One more try, Highlander Automation. One more try. Make that noise for the offense. Zamora going to the end zone. Incomplete. There was a lot of grabbing back there, but nothing called. Well, that was fourth down, so the Patriots now get their try in our second overtime session. Now there's somewhat of a surprise. Uh, Garza High School won their first game in uh, CMAC action. They beat Madera up at Madera 20 to six. Not a good look for the Coyotes. Kalinga's got a 33-22 lead on Dos Palos in Kalinga, which would uh, give them the uh, West Sierra League title. So the Patriots trot out onto the field here in our second overtime session. Neither team able to put any more points on the board thus far in overtime they are they're going from the Wildcat I believe no double reverse and he's got, they got a, a wall. He's got blockers and he's got plenty of running room they continue trying to Push down to about the 10 yard line. Lamas took it on the double reverse. Looks as though he got at about maybe inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, he's inside the 10 with a uh, right on that. It's about the nine yard line with the soccer, soccer painting there. A score on this possession and Hoover wins the game. If Hoover fails to score on this possession, we go to a third overtime. Give goes to the back. Spins around and comes down. It's down about the five. Darian Garcia looks to his bench for the play call from the coaches. Alongside him in the backfield, Devin Dungmala. But McLean wants to take a timeout. Who are a bit unpredictable. We have seen double reverses. We have seen receiver passes. Just a little bit of everything here in overtime by the Patriots. 
Any idea what you would do in a situation like this? Right now, I would just keep, uh, I'd pound it with the big man three more times. He got five yards to go, and I mean, I would just go straight using that big man. What a night, the final night of the high school football season. Playoffs coming up in a week's time. It has been a treat for all of us involved here at CMAC to bring you North Yosemite League football. Students from Hoover have been staffing the cameras tonight, doing a terrific job. Congrats to all the students who have worked on our telecast thus far this season. Guys in the booth and the guys on the truck. Correction, McLean students tonight work on the cameras. They've done terrific work. Crew in the truck, you guys have got to be worn out. You have done a wonderful job tonight. Great pictures, great action. Thanks for all your hard work. A second down play from the five yard line for the Patriots. Darian Garcia with the play. Receiver in motion. Garcia wants to throw the football. Pressure from the Highlanders. He is wrestled down and flung back to the 18 yard line. Jesse Martinez with the quarterback set. And Fred Clark is shaking his head next to me here in the booth. Okay, the reason I'm shaking my head and I was advocating just pounding the football in, you roll out like that. What happened the last time they did that holding penalty? Slip and just go right at him. He had three plays to get five yards. They can still score now. They're at the 15. They got two chances, but the opportunity I thought was right there to, uh, to end this game, slam the door on it. Darian Garcia. There's another holding call. Penalty. There we go, another holding call. He hits his receiver. Couple of defenders right on him. They've got him wrapped up and ridden down. That's exactly the point you were making, Fred. Hell, and I, now if I'm McLean, even though it would be fourth oh, down, no, no, it was fourth down about the That's nine yard right. line. I'm, I'm Ten yard penalty, penalty on repeat this. third down. Yeah. I figure you have a better chance holding them off two plays from the 30 than one play from the eight or nine. So from the 30 yard line third on third down. Garcia, under pressure, wrapped up, gets the ball off. Down go the Patriots, and it's fourth down. Fourth down, fourth down. Dumont with the reception, straight ahead of the tackler. That'll bring it up. Fourth down. So fourth and 21 now for the Patriots. Patriots are going to try a field goal. Hey, hey. Darian Garcia. Ball is on the 21. But Fred, my guess is you have to be prepared for a possible fake. No, I, I. Okay, who's the holder? Okay. The Patriots are going to try a field goal. Highlander High Nation, bring that noise for the defense. This could be. Uh, 37 yard field goal. I will, I will say right now, I don't like the chances of this. Garcia to attempt the field goal. Wouldn't mind being wrong. I'd like to see a field goal. Darian Garcia. Out of the hold of Pete Garcia. Kick is blocked. And the field goal is blocked. And we now go to a third overtime. No, in uh, college overtime, you would have they rotate who goes. Uh, we haven't seen any team go back to back on offense in college. You do see that. 
So McLean High takes over. Well, Edison spanked Bullard 37 to 14. These players have really got to be gassed out there on the field. <laughs> no doubt. Okay, coaches probably too. So to overtime number three we go, and McLean with the football at the 35-yard line. We're tied 14-14. Through two overtimes, neither team has been able to score. Okay, yeah, now Hoover's Hoover's get get the ball first this time. So this is just what you were alluding to, Fred. Yes. Now in the third overtime, they will switch possessions. Hoover going first. Well, in college, they do that after the first overtime. And I, I don't know if maybe they're supposed to do it here and the officials got caught up. Maybe they didn't know. Who knows? So the officials talking things over. McLean players out on the field. Hoover players huddled around their coach at the near sideline. Now the Patriots come out on the field for the third overtime. The two teams switching possessions as Hoover will now have the initial possession of the overtime. Darian Garcia calling the signals at quarterback for the Patriots. They have run some wildcat tonight and run it very effectively. We have not seen that much in the second half. Give going to the big back. Doug Mala, who is brought down, picked up a couple of yards. We have confirmed the final score out of the North Yosemite League. Final, it's Torres 29, Madera South 20. And Torres has defeated Madera South 29 to 20, so Torres is the champion of Madera this season. And the second place finisher in the North Yosemite League. The toss, is it complete? They're gonna call it a completion. Highlander's not happy about that call. Can't blame him, looked like he had one, uh, one foot on the side, on, uh, on the chalk here, but it matters not. First and 10, ball on the 13. So that gives the Patriots a first down. Ball's at the 13 yard line. That's what I do keep again. It on the and Dan, I, I'm, I'm sounding like a, definitely re, a definite repeat monster here. I just keep ball going ball with ball that play. Game. Just keep going with it. Picked up about four, Blue puts it down to the nine ball. yard line. Brings up second down. Second and nine, and once again, they go to the big back, and he is into the end zone, touchdown! But the game's not over yet. I don't think they realize that. Well, the way they're celebrating down on the Hoover bench, you would think they think the game's over. There are students down on the sideline. Some administrators trying to escort them back into the stands. And the Patriots are lining up to go for two. 20 to 14, Hoover now with the lead. Looks like the Patriots will stay out there to attempt two. Bring the noise, high nomination. Garcia wants to throw the football. He is under heavy pressure. He's got running room, though. But we've got a penalty flag. He is in for the two points. Well, they said he's but no good. Oh, he is no good. I thought he, I thought he had broke the plane, too. I thought so. Yeah. 
There's going to be a hold. It was a hold anyway here for Hoover. Oh, what was the number? Holding number 74. Penalty is declined. McLean's ball. So the penalty declined, and now McLean will get their possession in the third overtime. They know what they have to do. They have to score to tie it and either continue the overtime or score and get an extra point to win this game. A lot of scenarios that could happen. Well, McLean, earlier in the season, their kicking game wasn't too bad, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Pressure now on the Highlanders. They have to score. At the very well, least, to go to a fourth overtime. They're going to keep this ball on the ground and get nothing on the first play. The Patriots have just been on the cusp of victory for so much of the night tonight. Well, they did get one yard on that. This is something we haven't seen all season, Dan. A band in the stands the entire game, even into this overtime. This is great. This is great. McLean always with a terrific band program. From the pistol, looking to throw. Has an open receiver, but doesn't see him. Now he's going to go into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Flag Penalty down. flag. Touchdown. We're tied. Now an extra point wins it. There's flags down, but I think Hoover's getting flagged for interference. Pass on the stands, defense. Number 11, results in a touchdown. So in comes the play from the sideline. McLean getting over two points to try and win this. If it fails, we go to a fourth overtime, and Hoover wants timeout. So to talk things over. So the Patriots take time out. As the two teams head over to their respective coaches, talk over strategy, a successful extra point, and McLean wins this and finishes the season at 500. Well, McLean lost her kicker during the week, so I don't know the specifics, but that came from the coaching staff here to our extreme left. If the Highlanders make this conversion, they win the game. If the conversion fails, we go to a fourth overtime. I haven't heard about a fourth overtime in local high school football since it's been implemented, Dan. And you're, a, and you're a part of it, Fred. Yep. And as far as I know, there is no overtime cap. We could be here till midnight. To the line of scrimmage come the Highlanders. A pair of receivers at the top left of your screen, one to the right. And now McLean wants to take a timeout. Timeout called on the field. Timeout McLean. So clearly they didn't like what they saw, yeah. and they want to make some adjustments. And a lull comes over this stadium where it has been so noisy for the last several hours. A dramatic moment. I think a lot of the fans are as worn out as some of the players are. Well, I haven't really noticed the lowering of the decibel levels. Of course, we've got the Hoover students directly in front of us. Yeah, they've been whooping it up all night down here, covered with that green powder that's also uh, got a 
thick covering of the aluminum seats here at McLean. Try this again. Your Highlander offense is coming out onto the field. So out onto the field now comes the McLean Highlander offense to go for two. Some more is mobile. I'd have him roll out, see what he can find. And he's up under center, and that's what we have seen out of him when he is up under center. Rolls to his left. He's got two receivers wide open. That's your ball game. Pass complete. Two-point conversion, McLean. Highlanders win it 22 to 20. And Hoover is utterly disgusted here. Final score the 2022 Revolution What a thrilling end. Three overtimes. And the McLean Highlanders finish the season at 500 for the 22 to 20 victory. A valiant effort by the Hoover Patriots. The three overtimes falling and finishing the season at one and nine. And once again, like last last season, Dan, we closed out the broadcasting year with Hoover suffering just a absolute crushing defeat to the Highlanders, and it happened again tonight. What a dramatic game on senior night and on the final night of the regular season. In three overtimes, the McLean Highlanders with a touchdown and then a two-point conversion, coming away victorious, 22 to 20 over the Hoover Patriots. So Sunnyside High finishes the champions of the North Yosemite League. Torres High School finishes second, Madera South third, and McLean finishes fourth. And Roosevelt, Fresno, Hoover, and Sanger West. So you see the players all celebrating at midfield. The sportsmanship line shaking hands. We will see you next and, time. And Dan, right a here. game like this, the McLean, you they just the weren't in sync most ball. of the night. And even uh, twice in overtime, it looked like they were on their heels. Hoover scored. Their sideline just went berserk. And I think they figured the game was over. Let's yeah. take another look here. And this uh, is the two point conversion. It had two wide receivers open. Zamora sees. That was Negretti, math, uh, correction. That was uh, Castaneda. Wide open there in the back of the end zone. Hauls it in for the victorious two-point conversion. 22-20, McLean over Hoover to wrap up the high school football season in dramatic fashion. And that was a, the perfect play call. And uh, when you asked me before, I would, I definitely would have went with that rollout. And because Zamora is mobile and he saw, okay, They've got it covered. They came up and left two guys wide open, and he is able to connect with a pass. Well, a dramatic way to close out the season. We've had a lot of fun bringing it to you. Oh, yeah. Thanks to the crew in the truck. Great job, everybody. And to the students on cameras and other roles tonight, terrific work. Thank you for everything you guys have done. It's been a fun season, and we'll look to do it again next year here on CMAC. For Fred Clark and our crew, I'm Dan Taylor. Thanks for being with us. Our final score one last time, the McLean High Highlanders 22 Hoover 20 in three overtimes. Good night, everybody. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Hedrick Chevrolet, celebrating 75 years in the Valley, and State Center Community College District, covering Fresno, Reedley, Oakhurst, Madera, and Clovis. Thank you for your support.